Praise God. Turn up in your Bibles to Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Probably the better choice is to go to the New Testament page back and find that uh, prophet. Small book here. Zephaniah. Right before Haggai, right after Habakkuk, you can find them. Find it. That's what the way right there. <coughs> Amen. Once again, glad you're here. I appreciate the presence of God this morning. Amen. Uh, talking about uh, an accident. Uh, I was driving home from work and someone pulled directly out in front of me and just uh, I slammed on my brakes and uh, uh, was thankful that the Lord watched over me. And, and God does watch over us, doesn't He? Amen. Uh, if we lived in anxiety and fear over everything, you know, without our world, we would be a nervous wreck. Amen. But you know, the Lord watches over us as we come and go. Amen. Zephaniah in chapter number one. I'm going to read verse number twelve. The Bible says, And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men who are settled on their lees who say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. The Bible says, and I will search Jerusalem with candles. Uh, just let me give you a quick synopsis of what's happening here, what's happening with Zephaniah, what this book is about. You find that Zephaniah, he's a man, and the time that he comes on the scene, he comes on the scene when uh, uh, there is going to be a time where uh, Jerusalem is going to be carried away. And uh, he comes as a voice to give warning uh, uh, in a day where there really was, in his hour, doom and gloom. And uh, uh, he, he came on to give a message that God wanted to know that faithful people unto God, amen, that God would always have a remnant and He would always spare His remnant. Amen? Uh, we live in days of doom and gloom. Uh, sometimes it's just better to leave the news off. Uh, uh, days of doom and gloom. But, but, but the exciting news is, is that we are very much like uh, when the prophets of the night came on the scene. God's still going to take care of the remnant, and God is going to have a remnant who is going to be faithful, amen, that's going to sing praises unto God in a very ungodly time. Amen. Thank God that we have a place to come together together. Amen. That we can sing praises to God in a very ungodly time. And uh, uh, when you look at Zephaniah, he comes on the scene, and really there's not a whole lot. There's only three chapters, 53 verses all together, and he comes on the scene, and so there's so much happening. And so obviously when you have a book this brief, and this prophet's coming on board, he is saying in very much in haste what he's saying. He's very direct and to the point as he, as he speaks to God's people, and he, he tells them, hey, you're soon going to hear the footprints of God's judgment coming upon you. And uh, I, I, I want you to know that there's not time to be uh, lackadaisical. There's not time to just have confidence in God, not believe, believing that He'll do good or evil, but we have to trust that God is righteous. He comes on the scene at a time where folks, it wasn't that they didn't believe in God, uh, but they didn't believe that God was going to work or move, and that God had no interest in how people live, whether they lived good or whether they lived evil. But Zephaniah was the voice, amen, to warn the people of coming events, amen, that, that, that uh, uh, you need to allow God to search you. You need to allow God to have you in the right place 
for the days of danger that is coming ahead because God is coming with a candle to search you. Coming with a candle to search you. And so he didn't say he was coming to search Rome. He didn't say he was coming to search Babylon. He said he was coming to search Jerusalem. And so when we look at Jerusalem, there's so much that can be said. We can look at Jerusalem. We can look at Judea. I want to do an overview more or less this morning and look at it being God's people. Amen. So early Jerusalem, we find that her name uh, uh, being Salem uh, from Melchizedek, uh, who emerges to go and see Abraham, the father of the faithful, uh, the city of Ariel, the Lion of Judah, known as the holy city, known as Zion. Amen. And, and we know that even in Jesus' day, he wept over Jerusalem. So Jerusalem was very special to God. Amen. It's where the gospel was preached. Uh, it's a city that, uh, that, that the glorified Savior one day will return to. In Galatians chapter number 4, verse number 26. But Jerusalem, which is, uh, which is free, which is the mother of us all. Oh. Which is the mother of us all. And so I, I believe that we are safe in saying the church was born in Jerusalem. And when this prophet of God speaks to Jerusalem that God is going to bring candles, I believe that we can clearly say to ourselves, because our mother being Jerusalem, uh, the birthplace of where the gospel is, amen, that God comes with candles to search the ones that he loves and he vests interest in. Amen. So God comes with candles to speak. Why does God come? Because the Lord searches His church. He has. He does. He always will. He looks for those who will show themselves godly. Uh, he looks in the church and He finds those that are carrying burdens. He searches the church for those that are maybe distracted. He searches the church for those who are living, and this is a, a term that I read this week that I like, that are, is living in a spiritual eclipse. Any of you ever live in a spiritual eclipse? Not where the sun is occluded by, 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 by the moon, is, is occluded, that, that, that it's not shining as bright. Any of you ever live in a spiritual eclipse? You know that God is there, but right now something just seems to be occluding God shining the way that, that, that we would like for Him to shine and, and the way that He does shine. Uh, he looks for those who try to run and try to hide and try to flee. He looks for those who are in dark places. He, he looks for those uh, 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 that, 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 that are living righteous and desires to live godly. God searches for them and He searches with candles. I say all that to build a foundation. That God's ability to search, amen, is powerful. And I like what Zephaniah says. He searches with candles. Not just one. Not just a candle. But he searches with candles. And so I want to look at a few candles. In fact, I didn't bring a, a, a light to light these. I thought it would be safer if I didn't do that. But let's talk about particularly three candles that God brings to the church to search him. Amen. I believe that God wants to search us today. That's not a bad thing. That's not an interrogating thing. That's a good thing. Amen. That God is searching. He searches with candles. And the first candle that I really want to talk about this morning is God searches with His all-knowing presence. God searches with His all-knowing presence. You know, it was interesting. John was sent to the Isle of Patmos, a place where on the rocks they felt that it would just drive someone insane being there. You know, there are places in our life that are islands. There are places in life that can just drive folks over the edge. Amen. But the presence of God showed up on the Isle of Patmos. Amen. 
John saw someone that he knew, but he didn't know. He saw someone that he loved, and now he feared. He, he, he saw the glorified Christ who stood in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And the Bible says that as he stood there, that each of the fire uh, represented one of the churches of Asia. Uh, let me just read them to you. That the church of Ephesians, he says, I know thy works. The church of Sm uh, Smyrna, I know thy works. The, the church of Pergamos, the church of Thyatira and Sardis and Philadelphia and Laodicea. God said to each one of these churches, He said, I know thy works. So God comes and here He is with His candle and He knows everything about us. He knows where we are. Amen. And He says that, 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 that my knowledge surpasses everything. You think you don't understand it, but God does. Amen. Sister Tina said it this morning. It takes us by surprise. We're, 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 we're not for a loop. We didn't expect this. But God is never taken by surprise. His candle searches. His candle knows. He sees it all. The Word of God says in 2 Chronicles 16, 19, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show Himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward Him. Uh, Solomon wrote in Proverbs 5, For the ways of, the, uh, of man are, are before the eyes of the Lord, and He pondereth all of His goings. Proverbs 15, 3, The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. When Daniel saw Him, He had eyes of fire. When, 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 when uh, uh, John saw Him, he, he talked about those eyes of fire. He, he knows where we are. He sees. There's not darkness in the clues and hides, and there's not situations that, that are mounted on top of, but God sees. Amen. Allow them into your life to see. You may say, ah, navigating this is confusing and it's overwhelming, and I'm not quite sure about this. Allow the candle of God to get in there. Amen. That you're able to navigate it, that you're able to have confidence, that the power of the Holy Ghost can lead you in a victorious way. God knows, God sees. There's nothing hidden from his eyes. I said to you, uh, I think it was last month or two months ago, the little girl came home and told her mom about, uh, her mom said, what did you learn about Sunday school? She said, oh, that God's eyes, uh, they, they, they see me, they watch me. And, and the mother said, oh, isn't that uh, just, just creepy out? Oh, no. He loves me so much he can't take his eyes off me. See, the eyes of God are there. And his candle's searching, and he understands, and he knows. Listen, he knows. He sees when we live in times that are troublesome, in times that are ungodly. He sees the challenge that is set before us to live righteously. Amen. And he's going to take care of us. Amen. It's God who knew the exact location of Zacchaeus when he climbed up on a tree. He was sure no one else could see. But God saw and God knew. Amen. You may feel like spiritually speaking you're small in stature, but God knows and God sees. Amen. He knew the thoughts of the Pharisees. Amen. He knows and he monitors the inward man and he knows all the imagery that's in our mind. We may not even know it or understand it all together in our mind, but God sees it knows it. And he checks the holy to make sure it remains holy. That's why it gets his candle out, gets in our life. Amen. We want the areas of our life to remain holy that it gets in. Sister Gina, I'm like you. We look back at our life and we say, oh God, I wish I could have, should have, what I. But God says, I forget that. As we talk about the Bible this morning, his ability to forget, he chooses and it's gone. Right. Yeah. He gets in there with the light and he says, I know all. I know all. I'm taken care of. And so it should be encouraging for us. You know, we, we sing that song since we're little. Be careful, little eyes, what you see from the Father up above. He's looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. Mouth, what you say. Little ears, what you hear. Feet, where you go. You know, that whole story. Amen. And so I believe that we hear that as a child. And it almost fearful and we feel this uh, intense guilt and, uh, as we've done something wrong. Oh, God, see. But as we get older, we find it as a consolation that God sees. God does see. God has a candle out, and He sees every situation. Amen. 
that, you know, Job, we talk about him so often, but he was confident in saying he knows the way that I take. It seems cloudy, it seems dark, but God gets in the midst and with his candle, he really does know the way that I take. He searches with his all-knowing presence. We said that we know that when two or three are gathered together, that he's in the midst. We know that we've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, that the Holy Ghost ministers to us. And so we're an open door for God to come into. But do we know that God comes with candles? That his all-known presence illuminates and helps. He's everywhere. He's not restricted. There's no barriers. There's no places that he can't get access. But his all knowing presence is there. And so if he's all knowing, it should lead us to a place where Zephaniah was saying, listen, wrath is coming swiftly. Judgment is coming. But for, for the ones who love God, keep holy the holy and let God in. And know that no matter what you go through, that God is there. And God will lead through that. Because that's a candle that he desires to bring. How powerful was that? Amen. How powerful was that? Not only the candle of his all-knowing presence, but also the candle of his world. As believers, if there's something that we need light in our life with, is not only is his presence, but the power of his word. We know the word of God says that the word that that, that that lamp is a is, is a light to my feet. And a, uh, it, it, his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our paths. And so we 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 how can we focus uh, when we don't have God? Uh, how powerful is light? Do you know how powerful light is? Did you ever think about this? Anyone ever look at something being cut by a laser? Just go on YouTube and, and uh, uh, YouTube uh, uh, a laser cutting metal. Do you know what that is? That is all focused light. Focused light. And the power of focused light can cut out and can cut in and can do a work. Amen. The Word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. When we allow the light of God's Word into our life, amen, these gamma knives, these, uh, the, these laser things that they use to take care of the body, to be able to rid of, of, of disease, amen, uh, that's nothing new. God's been doing that from the beginning to mankind's heart and life. Amen. The Word of God gets in, and it's quick, and it's powerful, it's sharper. Yes, it's a sword, but it is light, and it's able to shine in places, and it's able to cut away. It, it, it reaches deep within the life of uh, the mortal man, and it helps us. Uh, to remember when they were on the road to Damascus, and they were talking, and they were yet unsure. They said, didn't our hearts burn within us? God had spoke to them. They knew it was God, in the light of God's word in their heart, the candle made it burn with inside of them. When is the last time that your heart has burned with the Word of God? That God has spoken to you? You've allowed the candle of God's Word to get in there and shine? You've allowed it to, to be a focus in such a way that, that, that it gets deep into your heart and it does great things for you? That our hearts burn because the candle of God has got in there and lit things up. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God is light. Amen. He speaks and there was light. Amen. He speaks His Word and men wrote it down under the unction of the Holy Ghost and it is light. Amen. The same light that was there at creation is the same light that can come into dark areas of our life and light it up because the Word is a candle. Like a fire, the Word of God touches like the word, like a fire, the word of God reaches. Like a fire, the word of God ignites. Are you allowing the candle to get into your heart and your life? I'm talking about, yes, I know that we live in troubling times. I'm aware of that. 
But as it was with another Jerusalem, so is it for us that God loves us. And God sees it as long as we are striving beneath the blood of Jesus Christ and desiring to live that walk that God is going to bring the candles to help us no matter what the times are. By igniting with His presence that's always there. And igniting with His Word. The third and final candle I want to talk about this morning is this. It's a candle of conscience. That part of us which God reserves for Himself alone, our conscience, and He sheds light on it uh, that we can see what our, our motives are. When God speaks to us uh, through a still small voice, our conscience. Do you ever think about that? Who you are, that deep, deep, deep part of you. I don't want to become theological or so um, technical this morning, but, but it's real. The deep part of who we are, beyond the outer shell that God has placed uh, around us, who we are, our conscience. And, and so listen to this little poem I found. I have to live with myself, so I want to be fit for myself to know. I want to be able, as days go by, always to look myself straight in the eye. I don't want to stand uh, with the setting sun and hate myself for things that I have done. I don't want to keep uh, on the closet shelf a lot of secrets about myself and fool myself as I come and go into thinking that nobody else will know the kind of man I really am. I don't want to dress up myself in sham. I want to go uh, out with my head erect. I want to, des uh, I want to de deserve all men's respect. And here is the struggle for fame and, and pep. I want to be able to like myself. I don't want to look at myself and know I'm a bluster and a bluff and an empty show. I can never hide myself from me. I see what others may never see. I know what others may uh, never know. I, I never fool myself. And so whatever happens, I want to be self-respecting and conscious free. I know that's just a poem. But think of how powerful it is when we let God into every area of our life. Have any of you ever made a choice or a decision, and when you made it, others pointed their finger, and then you feel the shame of, you know, why did I make this? And maybe it was more self-centered in my choice and my decision. Maybe it was an ungodly choice. But when we allow the candle of God to get into everything, even if people don't understand, we live a conscious free life, knowing that we've honored God because the candle of Him has got into us, our conscience. And so it was Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Remember when they ate the fruit that all of a sudden they said, Ah, we're naked and we're ashamed. You know what it was? It was our conscience because they had done wrong before God. We want to make sure that in our life the candle gets in. And everything that we do in our life is honoring to God. And we live that life that is free. Sister Ali, if you come to the piano, I just want you to know that there are candles that are burning. I know it's the daylight in our church. You may not be able to physically see them, but the candle of God is burning. He wants to get in your life and say, hey, here's my presence. That's always with you and working for you. Hey Amen. Do you just need to know that this morning? That God is there working. The candle of His Word. Maybe it's time you just really get in the Word of God. I believe this, that if we will get in the Word of God, God will give us a scripture for our life. He can give us a scripture for this year. He can give us a scripture certainly for our daily walk with Him. Do you believe that the Word is so light-focused that it can get to the depth of what you really need 
and will work and minister to you. God is here for what? And how about your conscience? That when you look at yourself every day, that you can look at yourself loving who you are because God's got it there in God's work. You know, I don't know if it may sound crazy to you, but I deal with lots of folks that are very unhappy with who they are. You know what the bottom line is? They've never let God in to the deep inner them. And they're never happy. And they never love themselves. We live in a world where a name, you know, some people will always look for a name brand to clothe themselves in. They'll always be looking for the next high, the next euphoria of life to get them somewhere. Do you know what the deeper problem is? They've never allowed God to be the definition of them. They are never able to go by the mirror and look even at their aging self and love who they are because God has dictated the choices. I'm talking about allowing God into the deep places of our life. You know why marriages fail? It's because people don't allow God into the deep places of their life. Do you know why people lose out with God? Because it becomes a surface thing and never a real experience in God. It has to be allowing the candle of God to get in your life. Amen. And allowing Him to make a change through the blood of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Ghost. And then the Holy Ghost guides us and we walk this life in the Spirit. And in the way of the transgressor's heart. But when we allow God to get in our life, this is what I love. This is what I love. Brother Dennis, this week, someone asked me a question, and I know that by their experience, they've not been a real church-going person, but they, they did in earlier years. And they asked me what I thought about something. I don't know if they knew a lot about my who I am and where I'm at. And all of a sudden, they asked me something about the birth of Christ. And Brother Craig, I started quoting from Matthew chapter 1. That person said to me, how do you know that? I said, because when I was a young child, I had to memorize that in Sunday school. As I walked away, this is what I realized, Brother Bobby, that that was a seed that was lying there for a long time until one day, Sister Sandy, God brought his candle and the light shined down on that in the crevice of my heart where there was soil and there was a seed that had not sprung. God allowed his light to get in there and it sprung and it lives. Amen. And that was not me. Amen. That was the power of the Holy Ghost who had birthed the Word that was in there. Amen. It's time that we get by just uh, uh, having a devotional time or just hearing the Word of God. Amen. Or reading the Word of God out of duty. Amen. Until we allow the light of God to get in there and, and, to, and to burst a life in that place. Amen. That's what God wants to do with us. He's here with candles and He's searching. It's not a scary thing. It is for the unbeliever. It is for the doubter. It's, it is for the carnal one who doesn't want to live faithful. It's a scary thing. But to the child of God who loves God and the things of God, to have the candle of God come and be ignited in your heart and in your life is an encouraging thing. So I just want to say this. Would you allow the candle to shine in your life this morning? Amen. Through His presence, through His Word, deep down into your conscience, we allow it to be God. Amen. With nothing further said, come find a place of prayer. Amen. And allow God to search.